What's up guys, Reed from Work Turbo here. And I've got something pretty important to talk to y'all about today. Please excuse my messy workbench. Y'all guys are keeping me busy. We are very grateful for that. But I'm putting together a pair of, um, of new G45 uh, 80 millimeters. And this is a prime time for one of my tech videos or a how-to video or a how not to mess up a lot of money video. So this assembly here, uh, Garrett uh, V-Band stainless exhaust housing, the Garrett clamp that comes with it. Guys, it is very, very important that you check your clamp and make sure that it is not interfering with the turbine housing. This area right here is prime suspect. This is a small AR, this is a 1.15, and I've got clamp to housing contact right in that area there. So it is super easy to get these clamps on and have some interference between the, uh, the clamp and the housing. What that will do, um, <laughs> it's pretty obvious, it will destroy this turbocharger quicker than you can uh, recover from it financially. Um, on this one, I have a much larger 128 ART4 housing. It is even tighter in here. We have a very small window. Um, I wanted to do this video, so it's a little, a little shooting from the hip, but I'm gonna loosen this guy up for you. Pardon the noise. All right, so get the clamp loose. This is our window of rotation for this guy. So if we go towards the flange and the foot, which you know, you're gonna have a bolt here, so it's probably gonna be a little tight, but that, that clamp will only rotate to that point, then it hits the housing. Going this direction, away from the bolt, it is up against the housing right there on this side, and you can see. So what this will do is this will cause this clamp not to apply torque evenly to that V-band flange. So obviously do a good eyeball check. I've even taken a very light surfacing disc and just condition the edge of these to take a little material off. The S400 is the same way. I'm sure some other turbos are. We'll tighten this guy up. And they're not torqued, we're just running them down. We'll flip this over, so bear with me yet again on my uh, super good camera skills. So once you get the housing on, if it's on the workbench, it's easy. Just, just look and see if the wheel is centered in the housing. Push, even though this is a ball bearing turbo, it still has shaft play in it. Push and pull on it. Make sure you don't have any wheel contact. If it's on the car, do the same thing. It's worth it taking the downpipe off and looking at it if you've had the housing off for any reason or the cartridge out of it. Compressor cover, it's a little easier to see because you've got uh, a little more contrast there, but when you pull this guy down, you're keeping about uh, in some cases as tight as nine thousandths of an inch. I've set some of our race turbos up at, at seven and eight thousandths. Um, that's each side obviously, so fourteen thousandths total. But you have no room for error. I just had a customer, brand new, brand spanking new G57106. So a seven thousand dollar turbo by the time he got it to his house. Didn't even make it a dyno pull. Compressor cover. You say, well, the compressor clamp should fit everywhere. That's easy. No, they don't. So this guy here, this is a Garrett clamp, right from Garrett. It has a, it has a range that's much more generous than the turbine housing. We've got a range of, of roughly about this tail will crash into this machine work here. Come back around on this side, same thing once it's tight. But we've got a range, but just take some time visually look all the way around everything once you get it together. Um, it is so, so important. While we're on this subject, um, we'll cover a little bonus material here, so y'all bear with me. Uh, sorry for the ex <laughs> excitement here. I'm actually trying to get these out the door today. Um, and I just ran into this video as a popped into my head as I'm tightening this up. I need to, I need to tell people about this because this is not, not cool to cost yourself a turbocharger. Um, 
So when you drop the cartridge down in, every one I'm gonna be a little different if it's on the car, off the car, what have you, but um, you just have to take the time. You know, this thing is just as important as any other part, maybe more important than some parts on the car, much more sensitive in clearances, that's for sure. Some pieces inside that Voodoo automatic transmission, I'm sure, that are this sensitive. I've had transmission guys tell me that <laughs> it takes some time setting it up. Engine guys will tell you the same thing. Your turbo guy's gonna tell you this. All right, so V-band clamps. You see, I'm checking to make sure this guy will still float. We have no contact between anything. Everybody tell you these things have a torque spec. If you're working on an airplane, they do. I'm going to give you all guys the quick, easy way. Quarter inch drive ratchet. At that point, I've got resistance. I got my thumb on it, my pinky finger on it. I'm pulling up. I've got some pretty good resistance. This thing will continue to tighten and it will, it will eventually just break itself. You'll never get it tight. So finger, forefinger, thumb, until it snugs. Once it snugs, plastic hammer. You want to tap around the clamp and make sure that it is seated. At that point, you can go back and give it one more little pull. It's very important to seat a V-band clamp. Very important. So compressor side again. These turbos are very sensitive. The blades are extremely thin. You've got a, a ported shroud slot that's very generous in these guys. So what you want is to make sure that when you put this on, everything on the mating surface is clean, spotlessly clean. No dings, no dents. Some Body pried it with a screwdriver, take a file, clean it down. This housing has to go on straight. That ported shroud slot will grab one of those blades on the compressor wheel, and that'll be a bad day as well. All right, got the clamp on. We'll start this one from, from the start start. The uh, first thing I did was when it's on a workbench, obviously it's super easy because you've got you can spin everything. But um, Garrett and Borg Warner factory nuts, this really cool silver color on there. That's actually silver. It's a lubricant, but it's always good practice to put on a, especially one that has been used, some anti seize. Never run that thing home dry. <laughs> no jokes. All right, so clamp is still loose, right? Still wiggle it. Check everything around it visually. Make sure we're good. Still loose. Right there, it got a little tight. You can still hear it moving when you tap it. All right. We'll say how. All right, twenty more times. Run it in a little bit till you feel the next little bit of resistance pick up. Tap it again. I know this sounds like overkill. You'll thank me for it. All right, here again, I've got this. It just started to provide resistance. Thumb and forefinger. Give it one turn, two turns. When you tap it, it should be solid. No noise, no, no play in it at all. And then just give it one more turn. That is all that baby needs. Spin it, make sure everything is happy. But I don't want to see y'all guys lose an expensive turbo over something as simple as interference between your V-band clamp and your housing. So no matter the make, y'all guys check it out. I love to uh, rebuild turbos. I love to sell new ones, but I hate to hear bad luck. Man, it's such a pretty turbo, but a messy workbench. <laughs> I'm going to go over these guys in some detail in another video, but 
just wanted to show you all this real quick while we were buttoning them up and uh, hope you get some takeaway from it. Hit that like button, subscribe, all those things YouTube wants you to do. And we appreciate you guys very much. Y'all have a good day.